up? Is this a microphone? I guess it's the annual upload day. Kind of came uh, soon in the year, funnily enough. So with 2020 a close and us getting ready for the new year, us already in the new year, I thought it'd be cool to kind of look back on what we experienced the previous year, you know, for obvious reasons. First, we had the threat of a third world war in January. So that's a great, you know, peaceful start of the year. Second, we had forest fires ravaging in Australia, which is kind of like a nice campfire to send off the winter for the year. And third, we had a new virus sweep the world, kill 1.7 million people and put other millions of people in unemployment. So, uh... Okay, so obviously 2020 was a dog shit year. Uh, you don't need me to tell you that. And unfortunately, its effects won't even be contained to 2020 itself. It'll definitely have long lasting effects into this next decade. But hey, we need some good distractions. What about entertainment this previous year? Well, video games were pretty great. There's a lot of great new releases and it seems like the industry's kind of going into sort of a renaissance with new ideas coming from both big publishers and indie developers. Music has also been really good with streaming services being extremely affordable, services like Spotify, Apple Music, and allows people not to just listen to their favorite music, but also expand into different genres and artists, which is great. However, if you look at basically any other medium, it's kind of a reflection of what happened in the real world aka a dumpster fire. While the theater industry is in complete shambles right now, it deserves to be talked about more. I'm going to be talking more about the film industry for obvious reasons, and specifically how movie theaters are in really big trouble. So in case you've been under the rock the past year, which has been placed under lockdown and sanitized every 24 hours to combat an ambiguous respiratory virus pandemic, um, movie theaters were shut down as well as film sets in early 2020 for obvious health reasons. And theater companies were hit hard with regulations closing down theaters and no new movies. Their stocks plummeted. Now, the obvious solution is for these film sets and these theater companies to implement new safety measures so they comply with the federal guidelines and people will start coming to the movies and movies will be shown to them, new releases, and it'll basically seem like everything's normal, pre-pandemic levels. And theaters followed this solution. They created a coalition called Cinema Safe to spread the word to customers and politicians that movie theaters are safe now. And it was also an attempt to be given lockdown clearance because they didn't want to be shut down for long because no revenue means the shareholders will definitely not be happy and we can definitely not have that right and some theaters did open up in small capacities however the film production companies weren't and still really aren't on the same page with with the theater companies companies like disney are releasing their new films on demand services and on their streaming services one of the most notable early in the pandemic was disney releasing mulan on disney plus under premiere access which is basically just a 30 dollar upcharge on top of your subscription which obviously i don't need to talk about how ludicrous that pricing structure is even if you compare it to a ticket from a movie theater and even add a bag of popcorn in there it's still ridiculously overpriced but anyways the main reason i made this video is because of the recent announcement by warner brothers that their whole 2021 scheduled uh releases are going on hbo max for free a month before their theater release wait hold up stop sorry guys uh tyler from the future here and i realized when i was editing i made a slight mistake uh, and saying that the HBO Max releases are going to be uh, one month earlier than the theater releases. That is completely wrong. Uh, I looked at the website and I guess I got some of the wording messed up on the finer print. And uh, the HBO Max releases are actually going to be the same day as the theater releases. So not a month before, but on the same day. And they're going to stay on HBO Max for a month and then you can only watch them in theaters. But the good thing is my points that I go into later in this video that you're about to see still hold up basically. But yeah, whenever I say that it's a month before uh, the theater release, just discard that and understand that it is the same day as the theater release. So I'm really sorry that I mixed that up. Uh, I'll be better in the future. But uh, yeah. That move is not only crazy because of how unprecedented it is, but it's also crazy considering Warner Brothers, a very big film company. If they're doing this, other companies are going to follow suit. And that will absolutely tank theaters. Think about it. Why go to the theater and buy a ticket for Dune, for example, and a bag of overpriced popcorn when you could just sit at home and watch the movie for free, given that you have an HBO subscription? Again, they're only going to be on HBO for a month, but at the same time, I feel like that's the window when most people 
would want to see these movies anyway. After a month, I don't think people would really be motivated to see these releases in a theater. Wonder Woman, Dune, The Suicide Squad, The New Conjuring, The New Matrix, and more. All these are going to be free with HBO Max this year. And it's not even like it's a dormant service. It's a super popular streaming service. Again, why would the general consumer go to a movie theater and pay more just for something they could watch on their own TV for free? Christopher Nolan and, I, I know I'm going to butcher this name, Denis, Denis, Denis Veneuve. I'm so sorry, you're a great guy. And the Directors Guild of America have all come out against this move, seeing it devalues film and cinema, whatever you want to call that. And others are just happy that films are coming out in general. Tom Hanks thinks franchises are going to bring theaters back, which uh, is a point I guess you could make. I don't really know why I put it in, <laughs> I don't know why I put it in the script. But of course, with these production companies bringing the distribution in-house, these movie theaters are pissed. And apparently many of them are thinking about slashing Warner Brothers ticket prices which will severely limit the profit Warner Brothers is going to make off these tickets. Which would just make the situation worse but at the same time theaters are on their dying breath so what are you going to do honestly? So right now it seems like the industry is just up in arms but obviously the most important opinion is mine because I make these decisions for the whole industry I guess. So what do I think? Well honestly I don't want to be like the really boring person here but I don't know and I know everybody's gonna hate me for saying that but it's again it's just really unprecedented right now all I could say is that it seems like movies are going to a place where theaters aren't gonna be the go-to place for new releases Disney seems like they're moving their new releases to Disney Plus as of late Universal seems to be going to streaming and of course we know what Warner Brothers is doing yet it doesn't seem like they're gonna be removing their releases from theaters because obviously why would you cut a source of revenue personally I'm an advocate for the theater I'm sure you guys probably have guessed I don't think there's a better experience than watching a new movie on a big ass screen with loudspeakers and hearing 500 bajillion dinosaurs die in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But at the same time, it's not looking good for theaters. If any of these production companies, any of the big ones, think about moving their releases to Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Hulu, or any of these streaming services, the general population won't want to go to theaters because there's really no reason. And with most people not going to theaters, that means the theaters are going to die out, which means the people who actually want to go to the theaters lose out as well. I mean, obviously, we need to get this virus situation settled down before we even think about opening theaters and reviving them. I know Tenant was released in virus-safe theaters, but I don't want to see that shit. I don't, I don't think anybody's going to keep their mask on for two to three hours, so I just don't trust them. I don't blame them. I don't really trust myself either. And overall, it's just safer staying inside, which of course, I know you guys don't need to hear this, but stay inside. If you need to go out, social distance, wear a mask. But anyways, it's just overall safer inside, so I don't think anybody's going to go to a theater, even if there are the best measures available. I do still wonder, though, if the vast majority of people will actually miss theaters. Now, there's obviously a very big social experience with going to the theater, but at the same time, I'm not sure if that will really be powerful enough to bring people back. Services like Amazon Prime Video are releasing Watch Party, where if you have a friend who has a Prime membership, you guys could watch original series together, which is sick but again that diminishes theaters even more so that's a reason why people won't be going back what i'm more curious about is if people are going to be fine with watching these new films on their setups obviously some people do have some nice high-end tvs nice 4k tvs and some good speakers but that's obviously not the majority but at the same time maybe most people will think hey if these movies are free the financial aspect is there why go to the theater i'm fine with looking at it on my basic 720p or 1080p hd tv with the built-in speakers that sound like ass but hey it's free. So yeah, either way, it's just going to be really interesting seeing how the HBO move is going to impact people watching new films and new content in general. In all, I hope production companies and these theater companies can find some middle ground between both parties. I read that the Directors Guild is trying to get a meeting with the HBO and Warner Brothers executives. Maybe things will happen. Maybe there's going to be some changes, but at this point, I kind of doubt it. And other updates. So apparently Warner Brothers is planning to restructure how they pay these filmmakers and the cast and the crews, of course, as the article says. Apparently, they're going to dish out some HBO Max streaming fees, um, adjust some performance-based bonuses, which is great. And I think that was one of the main issues that these people, these filmmakers had with the original announcement. So I'm glad that's being changed. But uh, yeah, I just hope theaters stick around because movie theaters are great. I don't think anybody really denies that fact. And going to see a really anticipated release with a bunch of friends around summer is just such a sacred experience. And I believe everybody should experience it, whether movies are on streaming services or they go back to the theaters. Or the feeling of watching Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom twice, like me. Yeah, that's definitely the premier experience for movie theaters. All right, guys, we made it 
the end of the annual video. I'll see you guys next year. Nah, I'm joking. Um, but uh, I do feel like I should explain myself because obviously I made a big update uh, video last time and I succumbed to that promise. Once again, I feel like this is the fifth time I promised consistent content and I'm really sorry. I, I don't know how to show it really and I know I keep saying sorry, but seriously, I'm really sorry. I feel like I'm kind of like a perfectionist in denial and I don't mean to be bragging about that at all. It's just, I because I do write a lot of videos I've been writing for the past few months since making that update video and I've even worked on a big video um, and I was pretty well into it but I just kind of didn't like the quality of it so I scrapped it and I'm probably gonna remake it so if that makes you guys feel better that definitely makes me feel better but whenever like I, I want to put something into action it takes so much effort for me to actually do it but then when I do it I realize why I love making videos in the first place it's so weird and yeah I'm just struggling with that it kind of relates to my procrastination video I've made like two years ago now oh my gosh that feels so long ago but yeah I'm working on that and I promise I'll try and be better um I don't want to promise consistent content but I do want to promise um all my videos are going to be really great and again that does sound very gloaty and kind of rude honestly but I, I just want to make everything feel super quality and I really want to um upgrade drastically in these next few videos and I want to keep keep that moving forward. I've been working on making movie reviews, making a certain movie review that's really interesting. Um, not, not, I guess not interactive, but I'm gonna make them a little bit more personalized so it's more interesting to watch that not only do you get my honest review in an actual suggestion whether you should watch a movie, film, get, I just said movie and film, this, that's the same thing. Not only will you get a suggestion for a film, whether you, sh you should watch it or music or video games or whatever I think about, but also how that impacts me and how I feel it adds to the human experience or just art in general. And I feel like that's gonna be really interesting. I'm gonna be really working hard on that. That was what my video before was about. It was, it was, it fell under that spectrum, but obviously I just didn't like the quality. So I'm gonna redo it and we'll see what happens. And yeah, overall, I just wanna keep getting better. Um, I want to get better talking to the camera. I'm, I'm, as you can tell, I'm not good with scripts. I stutter all the time. Uh, I'm gonna try and get better, and I just want to make the best quality content. Cause at the end of the day, I love this. It's just, it's just a weird brain fart I have sometimes with making content. And um, honestly, I'm just excited to, you know, make this video and get back into it, and hopefully, uh, it stays that way. But anyways, um, I also just really want to thank you guys so much because you guys are freaking amazing. I know I'm a small YouTube channel. But um, you guys have really just stuck out for me, and it's just, um, it's really rare. And uh, even for a small channel, the number that people, the number of people that watch me that are consistent, um, it really just warms my heart. So I just want to say thank you, and I hope this is worth it. And I promise I'll make it worth, um, the wait. But anyways, guys, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.